Hey lovelies, welcome back or to me and my channel. I'm trying to figure out what I want my background to be when I do these like sit down talking type of videos. And I feel like I like the way that this one's looking, but you guys can let me know what you prefer. I know for a fact though, I don't really like the one where I'm sitting in front of my vanity because the light in my apartment isn't the best. So one side of my face is super dark. It's kind of doing that right now, but it's not as bad because I'm closer to the window. Today I'm gonna be doing a fashion do's and don'ts video. I have six do's and five don'ts. I wanted it to be even and do 10 total but i just thought of something for the do's one so i added another one and plus the more do's the more positives i guess the better than telling you guys a bunch of stuff that you're doing wrong and a bunch of shit you shouldn't be doing like i always say when i do these fashion videos it's very lighthearted. it's just my opinion you don't have to listen to me if you don't want to i'm gonna start off with the don'ts though because one i have less of them and two i want you to stick around for the do's my first don't is don't save stuff for special occasions i used to be so bad for this and this is like a normal thing that people will do like you'll buy a dress you'll buy a pair of shoes you'll buy jeans a shirt and be like i'm gonna wear this when i get a promotion and i can take myself out for dinner or i'm gonna wear this when they finally ask me out on a date and it'll be like a super romantic evening while yes there are special occasions in our lives that it is nice to buy stuff for and get dressed up for if you think about your life as a whole i would say probably like two percent of events are special so if you're waiting around for something to be special to wear something that you bought a lot of the time those things are going to go to waste because if you you only envisioned yourself wearing it to this one specific thing that might not happen not to be negative you just spent money on something that you're never gonna end up using is sort of the same as like waiting to do nice things for yourself when something special in your life happens like you can create those special events yourself a trip to the grocery store can be a special event if you decide it's going to be one so waiting around to use the things that you're gonna buy is just a big don't for me my second don't is don't feel pressured to add or remove color from your wardrobe with all of these I'm I'm obviously speaking from personal experience but this one i would have to say is one of the biggest especially in like 2019 2020 is when the whole like e-girl and like bright colorful trends were going on and i felt like i had to wear a lot more color in my wardrobe to be considered i guess trendy and fashionable and i just thought like it made sense because spring's coming up summer's coming up i have to have a bright yellow i have to have a bright green i have to have neon colors and that's just like not true same way where if you wear a lot of color and you feel like pressured by seeing a lot of minimalist people and people creating capsule wardrobes and you're like i feel like i should wear more beige i feel like i should wear more black more white i need to tone down a bit if you're comfortable with your color palette keep it that way i'm not saying obviously don't experiment with different things but don't feel pressured to add or remove it because you're the one getting dressed your wardrobe is for you another big thing to realize is just because color can work for you you can pull it off if you don't like it there's no point in having it in your wardrobe and vice versa oh i'm wrong i guess i only have four don'ts well, that makes it even to make it 10. But the next one is going to be don't avoid trends. And this is going to sound like, wait, what? If you're like deep into your personal style journey and you're watching a bunch of YouTubers that are like, don't hop on every single trend, all that stuff, which yes, don't hop on every single trend, but also don't go out of your way to avoid them. I follow this amazing woman on TikTok. She's not a TikToker. I'm pretty sure like she has a job like in the fashion field. And I'm just going to post like her TikTok right here. She has a lot of videos where she talks about trends and how like you can use them to find your personal style and like having personal style doesn't mean you don't incorporate trends i think her most recent one was so good i'm going to actually link it below so that you can watch it and maybe put it on the screen here we've become so focused on gaining and maintaining personal style that we've lost a plot when it comes to trends personal style is the new lizzie mcguire you're an outfit repeater and it's become a zero-sum game if you don't follow trends you have personal style and if you do follow trends you don't and that couldn't be farther from the truth. Dipping into trends unironically is one way of finding your personal style. And there's an irony in people proudly proclaiming they don't follow them, because saying you don't is a trend within itself. She has also been like very instrumental in like my personal style journey. Just quick shout out to her. She's so good. But what I mean by don't avoid trends is that just like she has said on her page multiple times, trends help you identify what you like. For example, a lot of things in my wardrobe have been trends and some of them have been incorporated into my wardrobe because they were trending and I decided to hop on them the biggest thing is that you should have discretion when it comes to trends obviously don't hop on every single one if it doesn't make sense to you whatsoever if you only like wearing pants and jeans you're not a dress person you're not a skirt person it would not make sense for you to hop onto bubble skirts because you're never gonna wear it you've already established that about yourself but if you're someone who does like skirts and you like to experiment with silhouettes it might make sense for you to hop on something like that hopping on trends also doesn't mean that you have to do it right away you could wait like months even years to hop onto a trend don't think that because you want to hop on a trend you're not practicing personal style or like you're being like basic
basic whatever i always say this it's not a bad thing to like things that other people like if you're trying to make yourself not like a trend that you know deep down you do just because you want to be different you're actually being a lot more inauthentic than the people that are just participating in it and seeing if it works for them or participating in it because they know it 100 does work for them and my last don't i kind of just went a little bit of a ramble spiel on it but i'm still gonna include it it is impulse buy one of the biggest things that helped me with my fashion journey i would say specifically in 2023 was creating wish lists i cannot stress enough that impulse buying is going to be the thing that ruins your wardrobe and because people are going to take it literally when you say something like this that doesn't mean you can't like go to the thrift store and if you see something cool you are not going to buy it because you weren't thinking about it like three months before the best way to combat this is if you see something that you like just screenshot it leave it in your camera roll put it in like a wish list section if you don't go look back at that in like a week you definitely didn't want it that bad there have been things that i've kept on my wish list for months and months and months and i've ended up buying or there are things i've kept on my wish list for months and months and months then i realized i don't like it that much like i did go back to it but i didn't necessarily need it and then there are some things i've screenshotted literally forgot about like four days later and i'm like i'm very glad i didn't buy that because a lot of the times when you want to impulse buy something you definitely have something similar ish in your wardrobe that once you see the thing that you want to buy and if you're going to hold off and do the wish list thing that i'm talking about you could go back in your wardrobe and sort of shop your own closet and see if you can either recreate something like that upcycle something like that emulate it now onto the positives i'm going to do all of my do's the first do is to dress up for everyday life that goes hand in hand with my don't save things for special events you start dressing a lot better and being a lot comfortable in how you like to dress when you just get dressed up for everyday life for example even if you work from home you could still get dressed up in the morning it doesn't mean you have to get dressed up to the extent that you would like in the office but instead of wearing pajamas you could wear cute loungewear something that is comfortable but Still put together enough to the point where you feel ready you feel done up and you feel refreshed i don't think people see it this way but i think fashion is a lot like practicing anything else in life practicing a sport an instrument a language the more you do it the better you're gonna get the more comfortable you're gonna get so if you believe that by going to basketball practice every single week twice a week two hours every single practice you're going to improve as a basketball player why wouldn't you also believe that getting dressed every single morning if that takes like an hour 30 minutes is going to make you become a better dresser and just understand yourself more and plus dressing up for everyday life also makes life a lot more fun and like i said before helps you create those special moments in your life that otherwise wouldn't be there my next fashion do is find inspirations in old versions of yourself i know that as human beings that change often we love to like let go of old versions of ourselves and like a lot of the times talk down on them and be like oh my gosh i would never do this again i would never wear this again i would never even look at this piece of clothing again that's a very natural human thing to do i do that a lot i have been trying to get better at doing it but as of recently i've decided that the old versions of ourselves are still in us to an extent so who's to say that if you're 30 something the 17 year old version of you can't help you get dressed in the morning like there's something about your 17 year old self's fashion sense that you still like there's so much we can learn about our current selves by no longer shutting out the old versions of ourselves and this also works really well if you're someone like me who has documented a lot of their old like outfits and stuff like that give your old self a chance to cook this next do is probably one of my favorites and it is upcycling clothes if you're a big thrifter you might already do this maybe you have like a top or a pair of jeans that you really love but it's not your style anymore it doesn't really fit you you can figure out ways to upcycle it so then you're giving your clothes a whole new life it's a lot easier than it seems there's a lot of upcycling inspo on youtube people show you how to like sew even without a machine give you cool ideas and i think this one is like the most sustainable do that i have on here just like just giving your clothes more than one life is like a really good way of letting pieces you once love like change and evolve just like you and keep them in your life if you're able to do so next do is to invest in quality pieces and this is a little bit difficult i know yeah but i could buy like five shirts from this website for 50 dollars. why would i buy one thing for 150 well that's because of the quality my love and that doesn't mean that all expensive things are good quality that's not what i'm saying but i am saying that good quality pieces are going to cost you if you want things to last if if you want good quality you're gonna have to spend the coin for them and this will also help you shop less because you'll realize once you buy a good quality pair of anything you don't need a million of those things this next one is gonna seem obvious because duh but the biggest do is wear your clothes like i said you're probably thinking yeah no duh and trust me so many people myself included will buy things and never wear them i will say my excuse is that i create fashion content so i'll buy things with the intention of wearing them out but i'll style them a lot in videos and then like i don't actually 
wear them outside because when I'm going out, maybe I don't think of that outfit. But that's still not a good enough excuse because if I buy something, at the very least, I should have stepped outside in it already. So if you're going to buy clothes and you think like, I am going to buy this skirt, but there's no way I'm confident enough to wear it outside. Why are you buying it though? It's just gonna sit there and then I feel like you're gonna look at it in your closet and it's gonna make you feel bad that you're not wearing it and then remind you that you're not confident enough to wear it outside. So then it's gonna create a whole other dilemma. That's just a very human being thing where you want something so bad and especially nowadays because you can have a lot of the things that you want. You feel like entitled to have the things that you want. You'll just get it even though you have no real use for it. Please wear your clothes wear your clothes outside please go outside and wear your clothes i'm speaking to creators too because a lot of us will just buy stuff and wear it inside style it blah 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 and we don't wear it out and it's a little bit different but it's not different wear your clothes and the last one is document your outfits i'm a little bit biased because like i said i am a fashion creator so i always do this but you don't have to do it publicly online you don't have to post it on instagram you don't have to post it on tiktok you don't even have to post it on facebook you can just take a picture of your outfit if you don't have a phone use a camera if you don't have a camera i don't know find a way maybe journal it documenting your outfits is the best way of being able to keep track of your own style like you'll know like what things have previously worked for you what currently works for you what things you liked about your old style what things you didn't like i think the reason why it's so much easier now for me to dress i guess is because i stopped pretending like my old versions of myself didn't take pictures of my outfits like i put my archive of my 2019 outfits back up that i used to be embarrassed of and now i'm looking back at them and i'm like those were cute. It was very Coachella 2016 and there are things from those outfits that I would pull. Like above all things, it's just fun. It's a good way of looking back at a moment, the time you were in, the stage in your life you were at, maybe like emotional state, <laughs> I don't know. But try your best to document your outfits, please. You don't have to share them with anybody. It could literally just be for you, but I feel like your future self would really be happy if you did it. And also like your future fashion self would be happy that you did it. So that is everything for my fashion do's and don'ts. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, comment down below, share with a friend and subscribe because that really helps my channel. You can also follow me on all my social medias that are always linked down below in the description. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.